Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today I'm continuing the study of the book of Acts. Uh, I've already covered 24 chapters, and all those videos are available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. So I, I hope you will go back and watch all of that from the beginning. Uh, but today I'm picking up with chapter 25, verse 1. And I'll read it first in the KJV. Um, now when Festus was come into the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Uh, then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. But Festus answered uh, that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly thither. Um, verse 5, Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. So, uh, we I need to go back just very briefly to the very end of chapter 24. Connect a couple of dots here. Um, so Paul now has been um, held by Felix, uh, the, the governor, and he is, um, um, Paul has, you know, been telling Felix about uh, what brought him there, that he was in Jerusalem at the temple and uh, doing nothing wrong, uh, and, and yet he was under attack by the, the Jews in the temple, uh, and they were, wanted to tear him limb from limb, and he was rescued by the Roman authorities. And when the Roman authorities learned that Paul was a Roman citizen, uh, they decided to bring him to the governor. Uh, Felix, you know, so that this uh, dispute could be settled and that Paul's accusers could go there and uh, argue their case against Paul. Paul gave Festus an account, his account of what happened. Um, and now, uh, I'm sorry, gave Felix this account. When Felix, I'm confused sometimes, Felix and Festus. <laughs> but uh, funny names too, like we got... Felix the cat and Festus from the old character from Gunsmoke that come to my mind. Obviously that's not relevant, but these are interesting names, Felix and Festus. So he's being held by Felix, uh, but Felix is really holding him really unfairly. Uh, he already think, knows enough to settle the matter, but he uh, he's holding him, it says, because he wants to receive a bribe. He thinks that uh, perhaps that there'll be some fi financial uh, gain for Felix um, if he holds him long enough, eventually uh, uh, Paul and, or his um, uh, followers will raise some money and offer Felix a bribe. So he ends up holding him here for I think it says two years. And now another, uh, another person enters the, the scene, Portius Festus. And um, he's coming into Felix's territory. So it says at the end of chapter 24, but after two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's room. And Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, let Paul bound. So Paul's been freed, or uh, you know, he's 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 detained, but he's free. He's not bound. He can have company from his uh, companions, uh, but now uh, Felix decides to to bind uh, Paul and to, I guess, that would please the Jews. So Felix is doing that now. So now we move on to chapter twenty-five. And that's the portion I just read. But the key here is that, this is in verse 3, the high priest 
uh, is uh, says desired favor against against him that he would send him for to Jerusalem, laying wait uh, in the way to kill him. So the Jews are still hoping that this plot to kill Paul. By the way, I think there were over 40 of these Jews that took an oath to not eat until they had killed Paul. <laughs> Two years have passed. I'm sure that they have uh, broken their vow and they said they would not drink or eat anything. So there's no nothing in the historical record, nothing in the scriptures that tells us if these people didn't eat and they all died, I'm assuming that they broke their vow uh, because they hadn't killed Paul. Um, but the plot to kill him, the plan, uh, the, uh, the, the determination to kill him is, is, is still there. Um, so they're hoping that they can have Paul taken uh, back to Jerusalem uh, and he would, uh, on the way, they would, uh, uh, they would find a way to, uh, what's the word, when you're waiting for someone and you, uh, you know, well, they would, they would kill him as he's on his way to, uh, back to Jerusalem. But, but Festus, I don't know if he's aware of the plot to kill him, but Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly. Now in the previous chapter, the chief captain that brought Paul from Jerusalem to Festus, uh, he was aware of this plot. This is why he, he took him to Festus. So I am, I'm sure that he did to pass this information on to Festus, and Festus is, must still be aware that there's this plot to kill him. Perhaps that's why uh, Festus will not cooperate with the Jews and, and uh, let Paul go back to Jerusalem knowing that they would uh, uh, use that as an opportunity to kill him. Um, but he says, let them therefore, said he, this is Festus, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man. So Festus is telling the Jews, if you, who, whoever is able, you come and, we, and you can present your arguments against Paul um, and, and to tell us why you think he's so wicked that he deserves to be killed. Verse 6, And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down unto Caesarea, and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. Uh, which uh, we we know the we know the facts, the actual account of what happens, and their their accusations of Paul uh, against Paul are not true. Uh, verse eight: While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple nor yet against Caesar have I offended anything at all. Uh, so this is Paul, Paul's statement. Verse 9, But Festus, willing to the Jew, do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem? So I guess if Festus cannot get, receive his bribe from Paul and his companions, then Maybe he thinks he'll get some kind of a, there's something for him to gain uh, if he gives the Jews what they want and let Paul go back. But he, knowing that Paul is a Roman citizen, he has to be careful uh, because he does have rights. And so he's not going to send Paul back to Jerusalem. He's asking him, will you agree to go back to Jerusalem and there be judged on these things before me? Verse 10, then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat. So Paul is insisting to be judged by the Roman court rather than, rather than going back to Jerusalem. Uh, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong 
as thou very well knowest, that's Paul talking to Festus, for if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. So he's exercising his rights as a Roman citizen. And it's a good thing for Paul that he does have this Roman citizenship. Verse 12, Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, Hast thou appealed unto Caesar? Unto Caesar shalt thou go. So that means he has to go to Rome. Verse 13, And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came into came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. Um, and when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix. So Festus is going to give uh, this king Agrippa an account let me see verse 13 on in the Amplified. There's a footnote here about King Agrippa C. It says, Herod Agrippa II was the seventh and last of, of the Herods mentioned in the New Testament. So this is a descendant of Herod. Um, and uh, he's a king, but um, he happens to be up in the territory where Festus is. And Festus wants to run this all by King Agrippa. Maybe it's just a part of a being conversational, and or maybe he wants King Agrippa's opinion on all of this. Um, so he says, and, and Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, see ye this man, about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying, that he ought not to live any longer. Verse 25, And when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, this sounds a lot to me like Pontius Pilate in, in the trial of Jesus, um, and, and that he himself hath appealed to Augustus, that's uh, Caesar, I have determined to send him. Verse 26, Of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord, um, uh, the Lord is not the title that we refer to. This is not capitalized. It's, uh, it's not capital L in the word Lord. That just means that it's someone who is uh, uh, you, you respect and you, you, you place them above you in, in authority. Uh, but when we think of the, the word Lord being used with Jesus, it's capital L because it means not only that we are he, he has authority over us, but it also means that he is uh, God Almighty. It, it, it is a uh, title proclaiming his deity. But in this case, the word Lord just means that someone who is uh, above them. Uh, Wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had, I might have somewhat to write. So he's getting like a second opinion. Uh, he's curious to see what you know, King Agrippa uh, would uh, uh, judge all of this. Verse 27, For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. So that's verse 27, the end of uh, chapter 25. It's a fairly short chapter, and I, I'm a KJV firstist. I consider the KJV the source of scripture, uh, but I'm uh, not KJV only in that I, I'm not afraid or, or not, I'm not, uh, um, I should not necessarily say afraid because I don't want to impugn the KJV only as, uh, I was a KJV only as for 25 years. I don't want to impugn them like they're afraid to look at other, other translations. But um, they are KJV only, and so they are determined not to look at any other, determined to um, 
read only the KJV. Uh, but I find that looking at other translations sometimes can be helpful to me. But I test them well against the KJV. Uh, but the, the one that I like to look at is the Amplified, because the Amplified version and the Amplified translation uh, is really a, a translation and a commentary blended together. That's, in other words, the word Amplify means um, you, you're, you're expanding. Uh, you're expanding the scriptures, so you're adding the, your own thoughts. Your own thoughts, in this case, the, the Amplified would be the Amplified translators, the, the committee or persons who are doing the translation. They are putting in their own thoughts. They're amplifying it, so they're making their own commentary. So sometimes there's more information that is helpful. I and mean, it's, it's also written in uh, more moderate English that's easier for most people to understand. So I'm going to read this entire chapter right through in the Amplified and uh, see how it's phrased. Now Festus arrived in the province and three days later he went up to Jerusalem from Caesarea uh, Maritima and there in Jerusalem the chief priests and the leading men of the Jews brought charges against Paul before Festus and they repeatedly pleaded with him, asking as a concession against Paul that he would have him brought to Jerusalem. Uh, meanwhile, planning an ambush to kill him on the way, Festus answered that Paul was being held in custody in Caesarea Maritima, and that he himself was about to leave shortly. So, he said, let those who are in a position of authority among you go there with me, and if there is anything criminal about the man, let them bring uh, charges against him. Now, after Festus has spent no more than eight days, eight or ten days among them, he went down to Caesarea. And on the next day, he took his seat on the tribunal, the judicial bench, and ordered Paul to be brought before him. Uh, after Paul arrived, the, the Jews had come down from Jerusalem, stood around him, bringing many serious charges against him, which they were not able to prove. While Paul declared his own defense, I have done no wrong and committed no offense either against the law of the Jews or against the temple or against Caesar. <clears throat> are, are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and stand trial there in my presence before the Jewish Sanhedrin on these charges? Uh, this was asked to Paul. Uh, Paul said, I am standing before Caesar's tribunal, where I ought to be tried. I have done nothing wrong to the Jews, as you also very well know. Therefore, I am guilty. Uh, if, therefore, if I am guilty and have committed anything worthy of death, I do not try to escape death, but if there is nothing to the accusation which these men are bringing against me, no one can hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar, Emperor Nero. Hmm. So this is saying Emperor Nero. Huh? Uh, and I, the Amplified, I thought it said Augustus. Let me see if that's verse, verse 12, verse 11. Hmm. Let me see if I can go back to the... KJV, okay, verse 25, it said, uh, But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he uh, himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him. So here we see the, the, the name Augustus uh, in verse 25 in the KJV. Let me see what it says in the Amplified. Um, it says Nero. Uh, I can't explain that, uh, why Augustus is used rather than Nero. So maybe in the KJV, Augustus is just being used in place of the, the title Caesar. Um, but back to the, K, the Amplified here, verse 14. Um, 
While they were spending many days there, Festus laid uh, Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man here uh, who... Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, i got to back up to verse 13. Now several days later, Agrippa, the king and Bernice, his sister, arrived at Caesarea and paid their respects to Festus, the new governor. Um, while they were spending many days there, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man here who was left as a prisoner by Felix. When I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews told me about him and brought charges against him, petitioning for a sentence of condemnation against him. I told them that it was not the custom of the Romans to hand over any man for punishment before the accused meets his accusers face to face and has the opportunity to defend himself against the charges. So after they arrived together here, I did not delay, but on the next day took my place on the tribunal and ordered that the man be brought before me. When his accuser stood up, they brought no charges against him of crimes that I was expecting, neither civil nor criminal actions. Instead, they had some points of disagreement with him about their own religion and, and, and about one Jesus, a man who had died, but whom Paul kept asserting and insisting over and over to be alive. And I, being at a loss as to how to investigate these things, asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding these matters. But when Paul appealed to be held in custody uh, for a decision by the Emperor Nero, I ordered him to be kept in custody until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Uh, Tomorrow, Festus replied, you will hear him. So the next day, Agrippa and his sister Bernice came with great pageantry and they went into the auditorium accompanied by the military commanders and the prominent men of the city. At the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. Then Festus said, King Agrippa and all you gentlemen present, present with us, you see this man, Paul, about whom all the Jewish people appealed to me, both at Jerusalem and here, loudly insisting that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing worthy of death. However, since he appealed to the Emperor Nero, I decided to send him to Rome. But I have nothing specific about him to write to my Lord. So I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after the investigation has taken place, I will have something to put in writing. For it seems absurd and unreasonable uh, to me to send a prisoner to Rome without indicating the charges against him. So, um, so Paul is uh, now, uh, he's finally going to be sent to Rome. And that will uh, pick up next time with uh, chapter 26. Uh, again, I would just uh, ask you if you, if you by chance came across this video today and uh, you find this um, interesting and you want to know more about the book of Acts, then I, I hope you will go back and watch this entire series from the beginning. It's a playlist titled The Book of Acts, a verse-by-verse -verse commentary, and uh, starting with Acts chapter 1, verse 1, I've covered now 25 chapters only three more chapters to go. This book of Acts is very, very important. It is a, uh, a uh, history book, uh, a record of the first 30 years of the church. Okay, so thank you for watching. I look forward to your comments. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.